Uh, my name is Richard Fudd, and I'm from Ch uh, Beijing, China, and I have been working on SUSE for about five years. So at first, let me say uh, my English is not very good. So if you have any questions, just raise your hands up. And today I will uh, do some brief description for our OpenQA. As you know, uh, my teammates all over the city, or some, some as far as how I introduce a lot about our OpenQA framework. But as a QA engineer, I want to do some description for uh, us to, if you added some test into OpenQA framework and you hit some issues, oh, test the feeling there, how can we handle about this? Yeah. In general, we should have some failures but in general, the failures are caused by below three reasons. Anyway, the first should be the product bugs. You know, yeah, some issues happen. We should fail back against open source. But sometimes not all the failures are caused by the product bug bugs. Sometimes we need to reverse our testing code. And sometimes uh, there is something wrong with our test inf infrastructure, for example, network, uh, performance, or even some hardware broken CPU, memory, etc. Okay, let's, let me move on. Yeah. So the product bugs, uh, it, we, we usually see yeah, some issues with our product. But it, what's the product box? So if, if we hit some issues, we usually treat this product box. Oh no, maybe some packages are having problems. So in general, we have some regression box. For example, the test passed yesterday, but today the same test failed. So we can treat this box as, okay, we should fi uh, try to find some packages uh, updating, uh, some kernel packages as updating, or s even some patterns or some others, uh, for example, libraries are upgraded as well. Yeah, it's field. Then we can make sure it's a product bug. When downgrading the package to the previous kernel, the same test pass, yeah. It should be part of a bug. But yes, sometimes we should have some new failures. For example, if we have some new hardware introduced, it should be have some new CPU models or new graphic card, or even some new arrow devices there. But our kernel cannot support this new device. We may hit have an issue. So it's, it should be fixed from our, the product side. Uh, the third one should be the features. For example, we have some new features. For example, security, FIPS, OpenSSL uh, features there. Uh, we are claiming the feature should be ready. But in general, when we test the new feature, it's not. Yeah, it's also a product bug. So, in sometimes we also hit some tests there. The test is running and the test is already passed. But when we check the system logs, we can hit some uh, expected logs there. Even some system log has some fatal errors, even some trace logs in the system log. So this is also some pro potential product bugs. So as our QA engineer, we need to uh, analyze the serial log, not just in CAD. Yeah, the, the, the test is great. We can make it pass, but we need to double check that. In general, we should have some functional script or, func uh, uh, or some libraries to check the syslog. If the logs have some errors, warnings, uh, some twists, we should uh, fit at there. Yeah, the last one is the performance issues. Um, actually, it's hard for us to debug this type of issues. For example, the test failed there, but we rerun several times, it can pass. 
we should take, uh, take care of these issues. We, we need to take, uh, check there. Oh, the test is passed, but it has some ratios to fail several times. You know, we can, we can check more uh, carefully about these failures, not just make the test green. It's, it's not our target. Yeah, to the QA side, some failures and our test issues. In general, we, we should have some uh, test code reverse needed. For example, if we have some new infrastructure, we should support the uh, new hardware. We should support some new features or even some um, need to update. You know, need to, for example, we have some uh, kernel release or some new uh, OS release update there. We have some new desktop module. We have some new uh, software front. We, we may need to fix our test code to make sure all the tests can pass. It's not the product bug. Sometimes uh, it should be have something to do with the test settings there. For example, if we had some test, for example, we have some uh, disk performance test or some uh, I/O sync synchronize or some file copy test there. Yeah, we have some free space about 20 gigabit. But yeah, we have the new files. It's more than 30 gigabit. Yeah, we need to fix our testing to uh, allocate more disk space to the uh, virtual machine or some uh, test environment there. Uh, so, at the last, the, is the important things that set up, changes, or upgraded. For example, we have some QMU backend or some s backend backend there to run our test. But in general, we, for example, we can't make, make our the test environment in the old status. We should have some security patch with some, some kernel update. Yeah, that will cause the software update as well. In general, if we have some QMU update, yeah, the backend command should be changed. In this case, we should also change our test code as well. But for the QA, we, we should have a lot of uh, testing log there. We can, easy, we can get the error code very easily. But if you hit the new test issues, we should pay some attention about, oh, the, the backend QMU is upgraded, the backend worker is upgraded as well. So we need to double check about them. Yeah, the last thing is the infrastructure issues. In general, we, at the QA uh, side, we should also pay more attention about these issues. In general, we have some hardware issues. For example, the, the, the disk is broken or have some fatal error errors. For example, CPU for the uh, memory, it has some ECC errors as well. Yeah, the same test pa passed before, but recently it's failed and hit some kernel panic. We need to double check if something's wrong with the hardware issues. And the most, uh, how to say that, the, the how to is important or some difficult issues is network issues. We should have some remote access issues or even we have some delay there. So it, it, we can also treat this, uh, of these issues to the network issues. It needs as per or some experience for this type of issues. For example, when we try to access uh, running virtual machine that, yeah, it's failed. But sometimes it's called the bad network performance. Or even sometimes the DNS resolve as change as well. So we, we may take more care about these issues as well. Yeah, back to the performance issues is always the old question. So sometimes we have many virtual machines running on the same workers or same uh, bare metal servers. Yeah, it may have some bad performance. Yeah, some tests failed, and some tests failed to get a return in a long term. Especially for the, some old uh, setups, for example, ARM workers, we used to 
in spite of the lower performance than the, than the Intel S86 servers, etc. So the last one is the file corruption issues. The most issues should happen on this test. When uh, we test the automation, for example, we should have some ISO image, a disk image, even some reports there. But, you know, when we think, think these uh, devices as the ISO image uh, or some reports to the disk images, it's used to have some unexpected errors. Especially in our automation test, even we have some MD5 check, some, uh, you know, some other method to make sure our the synchronization was successful. But we need to double check about that. So uh, I think we should ask more expert minds to do these operations, not everyone to do these uh, risk operations at the same time. Okay, so file bug report is the, the main focus uh, from my presentation now because as you know, if, if we have some experience for the uh, QA set, we should be very familiar with this type of issue. But in OpenQA, how to file a bug report? Yeah, <laughs> so it's very easy. You just use this below steps, yeah. So first step is log into the openqa.opensource.org and find your jobs. And if you have any issues, you can see there is the button, bug button there. Just click it and add your comments, summary, et cetera, to fill a bug. Yeah, back to the last page. How to fail good bug report, exactly. So <laughs> there are should some rules here. But in general, I think to fail good bug report, we have some rules in the Google, in the uh, many web pages. But I think we, when we hit an issue there, we should uh, describe the issue. Yeah, it's happened with some package update, the issue fixed, we can provide the uh, uh, very clear reproducing steps and with enough logs and not only the, yeah, the test fields at which modules. I think it's good, good. Yeah, at the same time, I think we can also get some examples from the uh, bug pool there. You can find them. Okay, so let me introduce myself at last. My name is Richard Fan, and this is my email, and I'm the QA engineer from SUSE, and I work in Beijing, China. If you have any questions, just reach me from the mail. And if I can fix your issues, my teammates and uh, my peers and more experts can help me as well. Okay, thank you. <laughs>